Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the OM Times Radio Network. This is Sylvia Henderson, and you're listening to... um what are they listening to, Sylvia? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, right? They're mean girls. We oh, do my this gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is intuitive transformations, and we're supposed to start right at 6 o'clock, and I'm not sure what, what happened, but we're here now. Hallelujah. And um, let's see. Let's just get right into it. I want you all to know that uh, we are going to talk about transforming or reforming. I'm sorry, not reforming. <laughs> now I'm all, ah. I know, right? Let's, we can just take a breath. Everybody just take a breath together. It's always so fun. We love technology when it works. We do. We do. How to reform your inner mean girl. And I want you to know that this has been really quite an interesting show, even before it began. Uh, we've had some switches and changes, but everything is falling into place exactly as it should, right? Or it wouldn't be happening this way. So I have with me Amy um, Ehlers, and I want you to know that in the the show promo, it said that I was going to have uh, Christina Rillo, and she had a conflict in her schedule. She's the co-author of a soon-to-be-released book called Inner Mean Girl. Or how to reform your inner mean girl. You got it, yeah. Seven steps to stop bullying yourself and start loving yourself. And uh, Christine couldn't make it, but what's great is that, and you, you hear her voice here in the background with me <laughs> chiming mm-hmm. in because we're both so excited to be on the air, is I have the co-author of Reform Your Inner Mean Girl here, and her name is Amy Ehlers, and she is known as the Wake Up Call Coach, and she is the best-selling author of the book, Big Fat Lies Women Tell Themselves, Ditch Your Inner Critic, and Wake Up Your Inner Superstar. And she is the uh, co-founder of Inner Mean Girl Reform School. She's the CEO of Wake Up Call Coaching. And she is the co-founder of Find Your Calling with Lissa Rankin and Martha Beck. Her newest passion is supporting moms to embrace the whole truth of motherhood, messiness, and magic with the Mama Truth Circle. Amy has been featured on ABC, Fox, the Washington Post, the Huffington Post, and she loves lighting up the stage at events where she wakes people up to the voice of their inner wisdom. And I know everyone listening here knows how wonderful that is and how important I think that is to wake up to your own inner wisdom. And she helps uh, she helps them to cultivate the courage to not only wake up, but act on it as well. Uh, her first book, which I mentioned, uh, Big Fat Lies Women Tell Themselves, shot up to number one in several categories on Amazon, including self-help, happiness, and self-esteem. And her next book, which she is the co-author of, Reform Your Inner Mean Girl, Seven Steps to Stop Bullying Yourself and Start Loving Yourself, which she co-wrote with Christine Arilla, is based on the internationally acclaimed program that has helped over, now get this, has helped over 30,000 people around the world love their inner critics to death. Ah! (laughs) Uh, In uh, 2010, she was a recipient of the Women Who Dare Award from Girls, Inc. She holds a bachelor's from the University of California, and she earned the CPCC designation from the Coaches Training Institute, uh, which is the equivalent of a master coach. She's been a coach for over 15 years. She lives in the Bay Area in San Francisco, and I am excited to have her here as we talk about the soon-to-be-released book, Reform Your Inner Mean Girl. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you so much, Sylvia. I'm so glad that we were able to get through on the airwaves and be 
not only here with you, Sylvia, but with everybody listening. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So I am so excited about this new book. I think that this is something that uh, we definitely need in our society. Um, I know that that inner critic can be uh, quite brutal. And and you say in your book uh, that I believe it's going to be released next month. Is that correct? Yeah, on April 7th is the official release date, but it's available for pre-ordering right now. Perfect. So people can go to Amazon and they can... They can. They can go to Amazon and they can also go to our site, innermeangirlbook.com. And we have a really cool jumpstart workshop that we're giving people as a free bonus gift when they pre-order. Now that's great. Outstanding. Yeah. I love free stuff. I know. I know everybody too, right? listening does too. Yeah. Who doesn't, <laughs> right? Right. And so in this book, you state that, uh, that this is a silent epidemic of women that beating themselves up, that it's kind of one of these things that's hidden because no one really knows looking from the outside in what's going on internally in someone's thought processes. Yes. Well, you know, it's been so interesting, you know, as, as you mentioned in my introduction there, I've been a life coach now for over 15 years. And it's fascinating to me when I am I gather a group of women in particular together to sit in circle, whether at a big event or at a small intimate retreat. Well, why don't we hold that for just a moment and we're going to continue that conversation. I can't wait to hear more about your experience and how you uncovered this inner mean girl. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations. Stay tuned. This is going to be a really phenomenal show, folks. Thank you for listening. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent Talk for the Conscious Mind. Hi, I'm Katrina Kavanagh, host of the I Am Wisdom radio show. I Am Wisdom is about the connection between mind work and energy work, spirituality and living a wonderful life. Looking forward to sharing each Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with you. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations on IOM FM, and this is Sylvia Henderson, your host. And I have been chatting here with Amy Ehlers. And right before the break, she was talking about her experience as a coach over the last 15 years and how she and Christine, or even her herself, began to notice this silent epidemic uh, of self-bullying that women um, – are experiencing where they're being so hard on themselves. So Amy, going back to you, what were you saying right before the break? Yeah. So I was saying that it, it's been remarkable as, you know, sitting in a room with women, either in an actual room or virtually and asking them to turn to a woman next to them and, and admit what they're hard on themselves about. And Sylvia, I have to tell you, it is shocking to hear how people are beating themselves up behind the scenes and how they're really bullying themselves, how they're talking to themselves in a destructive manner, 
the way that they're sabotaging themselves. And it really is the silent thing. But when we sit across from another woman and have an honest conversation about this and really kind of reveal what's going on behind the kimono, so to speak, (laughs) and really unveil it, it's like, oh, I'm so not alone. And we found that women in particular are really hard on ourselves. We're incredibly hard on ourselves because we have so much on our plate. We're like a juggler oftentimes, kind of all these different balls in the air. We have our careers. We have motherhood. We have our relationships. We got to get the laundry done. We got to get the dishes done oftentimes. And it's even as we've looked at over the past 50 years, how we have so many more choices now at women. The problem is that studies have shown that nothing got taken off of our plate as we added more on our plates. So we are just feeling so much pressure and have more responsibility than we've ever had before. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, I, I, I noticed that you also mentioned that even very successful women, women who we admire, those of us who um, look up to certain individuals in the media or are in corporate America, um, who have really made some major achievements in their lives that seem to have really strong self-esteem and soft self-presence, that they even succumb to this inner bullying. Is, is, that, is that something that you've noticed during some of your interactions with people and and exposing this? Absolutely. I mean, it really just, as it turns out, no matter how rich or successful or beautiful or thin or wealthy a woman is, behind the scenes, she's being really hard on herself. We look at women like Oprah, who have, uh, who's openly talked about her battle with food addiction and the way that she's really beat herself up and allowed what's going on with her weight to rob her of so much joy in her life. Or someone like Elizabeth Gilbert, who's the best-selling author of Eat, Pray, Love. This is a quote from her. She declared, the real battle for me was my own self-abuse. To learn how to stop and drop the knife I was holding to my own throat, I was never good enough. She's amazing. I got yes. had an opportunity to see her when Oprah came here to Seattle. She was part of the crew, and and right. her, she's very honest and very forthcoming with this kind of a conversation. So, um, so is this a self esteem issue? Then is that what you're saying? You know, it's not. It really is interesting because we've really noticed that women who have an incredibly high self esteem and even a lot of self confidence can often actually be deficient in self-love and self-compassion. And this is really, you know, one of the things in Reform Your Inner Mean Girl in our new book coming out, the part, part one of the book, the entire first, it's, um, there's seven steps total. And the first three steps are dedicated to really getting to know your specific type of inner mean girl. And we see inner mean girl archetypes, which I know we'll talk about a little bit on the show. But for example, the achievement junkie archetype, who is addicted to achievement, achievement no matter what the cost. And I, and I love the example, you know, Ariana Huffington is out there talking about this with her new book, Thrive, mm-hmm. and about how she woke up in a pool of her own blood collapsing from exhaustion and realized that her entire lifestyle, that she was miserable, even though she's one of the most successful and wealthy women out there, she has a ton of self-esteem, a ton of self-confidence, But as far as self-compassion and self-love go, there's a deficit there. It's almost we become bankrupt sometimes in the way that we treat ourselves of how kind we are are to ourselves. So self-bullying is definitely not just for women who have low self-esteem. It runs across the gamut of really all women and honestly, all human beings. Men, you don't get left off the hook about this. (laughs) I was wondering about that. (laughs) Yeah, no, men are definitely hard on themselves as well. Um, You know, my dad and my husband both have read both of my books and they're like, I could relate to so much of it, Amy. And I'm, I'm like, of course you can. And there's some really specific things that we have noticed about women. And so Christine and myself and our work at Intermean Girl Reform School and and through the the work in this book and the tools that we give, we're really talking woman to woman because we think this is a conversation that women need to really be having at this important time in history. And I couldn't agree with you more. This is definitely something. And and 
yes, men are not off the hook. I mean, I think this is a condition of our humanity, unfortunately. So what are some of the signs that a woman who is suffering from self-bullying might present? I mean, what would you look for in a, is it something you just self-assess or is something that you can notice in a friend or what are some of the signs you would look for? Yeah, well, everyone listening, just go, I'll, I'll tell you a few of the signs and just see if you ever do any of these things. So do you ever compare yourself to others, making yourself feel really bad about yourself or interestingly enough, compare yourself to others and then feel superior to other people? Mm. Both, same coin, two different sides. Both are actually a sign of self-bullying. Or if you constantly judge and criticize yourself, maybe you're looking in the mirror and you feel like, oh man, I feel, I'm feeling terrible at how, about, how I, um, about how I look. Or you feel obligated and do things out of guilt, saying yes when you really say no. Or That's a big one. A huge one, yeah. And we'll talk about the good girl archetype. Oh, my Lord. Um, or maybe you have incredibly high, impossible-to-reach expectations. Or you continually do things that sabotage you, that you know sabotage you, like overeating or overspending or being in relationships with people who don't respect you. So it's those are just some of the signs. That's the short list, Sylvia. It's a great list. I love it. Mm. So um, I want to, you did mention something about a quiz. Is that something that you would use here or something? Uh, Yes. So we have a a quiz called the Inner Mean Girl Quiz, which people can check out at innermeangirlquiz.com. It's a free quiz where people can use this assessment tool that we created to find out specifically what type of inner critic you have, Mm -hmm. what of the 13 different inner mean girl archetypes you have. And that can really help you understand what way you're particularly bullying yourself because it shows up in different ways. So it really is one of those things where you you want to understand what makes your inner mean girl tick and in step 2 in the book we really go into that what what make what's her, what are her triggers you know does your inner mean girl show up when you're standing in front of the mirror does she show up in your relationships does she show up in the bedroom does she show up in the boardroom does she show up in the, your bank account where are those different places that she shows up and really understanding oh the, these are the triggers for her And then what happens when she shows up? Do you start really just beating yourself up and being mean to yourself? Do you start saying again, yes, when you really should be saying no and you have no boundaries any longer? Do you overeat, overdrink, overspend? What are those particular things that happen when she shows up? And so it's really, it's almost like we put on our, and you know, we say in the book, put on your investigative reporter hat. And um, act like a, you're a, a reporter doing an expose, and it's just the expose happens to be on your inner mean girl. Because as you really get to know her and form a relationship with her, that's the thing, that's the very first step in really allowing you to reform her and transform her. So I, I also noticed that it had something to do with just exposing the, first of all, you have to admit that you have this inner mean girl. So right. taking that test or reading the book will give you that information. Absolutely. And then you said create a relationship with her, but how do you do that with this part of yourself that is antagonistic and is the bully? And, yeah. um, you know, how do you get that under control? I, I have to admit, I'm thinking about my little inner mean girl right Absolutely. now. Oh, yes. Well, Sylvia, I have an inner mean girl as well. So does Christine. My inner mean girl's name is Negative Nelly. <laughs> and she is the worry wart. She, she actually is kind of like Blair from The Exorcist. She, she transforms and has multiple personalities. So I have several different archetypes within this one inner mean girl. And um, she's, she can be really brutal. And so, yeah, it, it really is. What we encourage women to do in Intermean Girl Reform School and in the book as well is to actually go ahead and personify her as if she is a different person, as mm. if she's other than you. We have women draw their inner mean girls. We even, we did this wonderful retreat at Kerpalu, which we're going to be at Kerpalu again at the end of August this year. And we did this wonderful retreat and we had, we just got those really simple brown paper bags, like those little lunch bags, and we made very simple puppets. And then we had women actually have this conversation with their puppet and be, and have the puppet be their inner mean girl. And they had the opportunity to get their inner mean girl interviewed so they could get to know her and understand her. And it sounds completely absurd and childish and ridiculous. 
it's and let me tell you there's so much power in play and infusing this deep transformational work with a lot of play which is one of our values at Intermean Grow Reform School for sure so it really is about acting as if she's an outside person Mm -hmm. and naming her, drawing her, finding an image that represents her, finding an object, some sort of physical representation of her. Because as you do that, you'll start to be able to really distinguish her voice from your own voice, which is so important in this work. So in working with your inner mean girl, um, is there a way to appease her? I mean, yes, we draw her out. We identify her. I got that part. Yep. But then how do you get her to be a little bit more complacent, I guess? Right. Right. Well, we always say, you know, of course, we wish we could kill them off, but sorry, (laughs) ladies. Believe me, I've been doing this work for a long time. If I could have killed negative Nelly off, I would have absolutely done it a long time ago. But it's just not how the human psyche works. It's not the human experience. it's, It's just a matter of not letting your inner mean girl and your inner critics make your choices for you. That's the key. And understanding that when they show up, it's often really good growth that's happening. It's like, oh, my inner mean girls are really coming up. I must be having a book coming out in a few weeks. Oh, yes. I can expect that my inner mean girls are going to come on the scene. So that that's part of it is really getting to understand them, getting to understand what makes them tick. And then as you do that, you also then start to really turn your focus on cultivating a relationship with your inner wisdom. And that is the voice of loving truth absolute, unconditional love for you, compassionate always, kind always, even when she's really giving you a tough love truth, she's coming from compassion and kindness and love. Wow. And so that's the voice that we really want making your decisions for you. And yeah, so it's it's um, really distinguishing out those two and then we can start reforming that inner mean girl as well. That sounds wonderful. I can't wait to hear more about this. I feel very inspired now. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations. I have my special guest here, Amy Ehlers, and we are going to return in just a moment after the break to continue this conversation on how to reform your inner mean girl. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jollish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello and welcome back. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations with Sylvia Henderson, and I have my special guest here, Amy Ehlers, and we are talking about how to reform your inner mean girl, and we have heard some fantastic tips, and I do have a few more questions for you, Amy. First of all, how do you um, handle 
and a mean girl attack when you're right in the middle of it? And is there a way to prevent it? I mean, is it something that you can kind of see the sign? I think you mentioned one thing about when it when she shows up, it's pretty much a sign that uh, you're about to launch a new book or something big is on the horizon. It sounds mm-hmm. like the enemy mean girl tends to rise her little head up when you have uh, embarking on something new uh, as a form of resistance. Is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. It really is. You know, our, our inner mean girls, they were really developed out of protection and out of trying to keep us safe and in um, the comfort zone, even if it's not that comfortable. <laughs> you know, when you really look at the brain science of it and we look at the way that our brains work best, they want things to stay the same. That's how our brain works best. So they're constantly, we're actually constantly fighting our brain to expand and to grow because the brain just wants status quo. It wants homeostasis. And so the inner mean girl's job really is to keep things the way they are, to keep you small, to keep you in the uncomfortable, bad habits that you have, because that's at least what we know. It's what those neural pathways in your brain are programmed around. Mm. And so when we are, you know, we call it the inner mean girl attack, when the inner mean girl just starts attacking you, Oftentimes it's because you're trying to stretch and you're trying to grow. You're you're coming some sort of breakdown to break through, as the saying goes. There's some there's something afoot. So we always have when our clients are like, oh, my inner mean girls are being brutal to me right now. Oh, I'm under attack. My first question is, so what's what big? What's what's big? Like where are you growing? Mm-hmm. Where are you stretching? Where are you uncomfortable right now? And you know, it's amazing. We have clients who will come to, you know, the inner mean girl reform school calls. And say, I don't know why my inner mean girls are beating us up. And then, you know, we start having a conversation with them, ask them a few questions. And it turns out, oh, they got back to writing the novel that they had put away for years. Or they're finally in love for the first time in 10 years. And then their inner mean girls, of course, are going to have a field day telling them that it's not going to work out or whatever the racket is of the particular inner mean girl. So that's really when we can expect them to come out. And so we are all about trying to put in preventative care measures so that we can prevent inner mean girl attacks before they come. And we like to say support prevents sabotage. Support prevents sabotage. And so it really is about forming that relationship with your inner wisdom and allowing yourself to have daily sacred dates with your inner wisdom, mm. really allowing her to become your best friend. And as that relationship becomes stronger, your inner mean girl will then fall in line behind that. And we actually, in step seven of the book, we assign our inner mean girls new jobs. So depending on what kind of archetype you have, you know, for example, I, um, negative Nelly is often a worry wart, especially for me with my, with my kids. I have two girls, mm-hmm. um, ages one and seven and a half. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I became a mom, I birthed new inner mean girls. It was like, <laughs> it just expanded. <laughs> it was like an army, you know, so and are we I, born with these inner mean girls or are they developed? Is it something we learn in our childhood? Where are they coming from? Yeah, it's part of this of human development. Studies show that usually around six or seven mm-hmm. is when the inner mean girl is developed. Um, it really is a form of our consciousness because prior to that in our brain, and if you, you know, I've watched with my daughter, Annabella, my oldest, that, you know, when she was in kindergarten, when she was five, and I would say, oh, do you have a voice in your head that says things that maybe aren't so nice to you? And she was like, what? Like, looked at me like, what are you talking about, mom? (laughs) You know, like, you're crazy. I don't know. I don't have these voices in my head. But now at seven and a half, she has her inner mean girl. um, And we actually do exercises together to help her with her inner mean girl, who is a comparison queen, which is one of the archetypes who compares her to other girls in the class and has her feel less than, and then sometimes has her feel better than. So we talk about the inferiority complex and the superiority complex and how neither are good. But um, yeah, it really did start developing right around between six and seven is when she started to really have that. And that's very common. Um, And because prior to that, kids are really in the moment. They're just having their experience. That's true. And then as the brain develops right around that time, they have this consciousness. And so that means that we can be the observer of thought, whereas prior to that, they're just purely in that blissful moment. 
So you, in your book, you talk about 13 specific types of intermean mm-hmm. girls. Is that correct? So what are some of the most common ones? You said negative Nelly, and there are a couple more, I think, that you just mentioned. But can you... Yeah, so Negative Nelly is actually the name of my particular Intermean Girl. Okay. She's, yeah, so um, we definitely encourage you at Intermean Girl Reform School and in the book as well. Everybody to gets your their own girl. name. <laughs> you got it, yes. But, the, but you know, really starting to get to know your Intermean Girl, we have these 13 different archetypes. So, uh, may, uh, and I'll encourage all of your listeners, just kind of see which one of these might sound a little familiar. So I've mentioned one, the comparison queen. She's a hugely common one amongst women. Um, again, comparing your worst to everyone else's best or comparing your best to everyone else's worst. Either mm-hmm. way, not so fun. Mm-hmm. We have the achievement junkie. I mentioned her a little bit. I have a feeling that's what Ariana Huffington has is an achievement junkie who wants that hit of achievement, no matter what the cost, never lets her rest. Never Mm. lets her celebrate. The workaholic. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's really interesting. Women with an achievement junkie get really scared when they start reforming their achievement junkie because they get worried that they're going to become this loser on a couch eating bonbons all day or something. But I can assure you that we love achievement, you know, Christine and I do, but it's the junkie part we're trying to get rid of. Mm. And then there's the good girl, which we've also mentioned. She's a big one. People pleaser, always wanting um, to make sure that she is perceived as good, even if that means, you know, giving up on her own self-care and what she really needs. We have the perfectionist, which is, you know, that inner perfectionist. I know a lot of women relate to her. She's always going for that A plus grade in life, even though no one's grading her most of the time. <laughs> Only so, her inner, inner, inner yeah. mean girls grading her, I take it, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's, you know, we have the worry wart who's constantly worrying and running worst case scenarios all the time, putting anxiety on you. We have the doing addict who's really addicted to doing and doing and doing. She's that woman that just cannot sit still, Mm. just cannot. It's all about staying in movement. Yeah. Does anyone ever have a combination of these? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And we mentioned that, you know, there's the innermeangirlquiz.com, a free quiz that Christine and I developed where you can fill out these questions and then we'll let you know where you score on all 13 of the Intermean Girl archetypes. And you'll find that usually women have two to three that are running the show right now in their life. And what I've discovered is in different phases of my life, I'll have a particular archetype that, you know, I never had a worry wart prior to becoming a mom. Mm. I really didn't. Mm. And then it was like, I became a mom and I, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know how people live with anxiety. This is terrible. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so they can really, at different phases of life and different places in life, they can really develop um, based on what's going on in your life. So, yeah, you can definitely have multiple archetypes, um, and it and it can be just a nice guide to know which ones. And then, of course, in the, with the quiz, we have a instant deactivator tool that we give you for each of the specific archetypes. Oh, that's beautiful. To try out. Yeah, That's beautiful. Really so fun. everyone, yeah. make sure you go to innermeangirlquiz.com to get that. I know I'm going to do that as soon as the show is over. Good. Yeah, it's really <laughs> fun. It's fun to look at too. And it's fun because, you know, we want to be playful about this, even though we're doing really deep and profound work. We've just found this approach. One of the things that we love about what we're doing in the book and what we do at Intermingle Reform School is we just have fun with it. Because it can feel really daunting to do inner critic or shadow work. It can feel really daunting and scary and like, I don't want to do that. But I tell you what, in the book, we guarantee that you're going to have a fun time even as you start releasing these inner mean girls. That's awesome. And then what about how does the inner mean girl uh, treat other women or other people? I mean, I'm sure that that can be a little detrimental. Um, Yes. Yes, we all we often say inner mean girls can turn into outer mean girls. Mm. And that's one of those things that really getting to know, okay, what triggers your inner mean girl? And then what do you do when your inner mean girl is triggered? And for some women, and apparently a lot of women that are featured on reality television shows, <laughs> they become <laughs> mean to other women. Mm-hmm. And so we really, you know, being mean to other women, being mean to your partner, being mean to your children, your the animals in your life, all of that is a huge red flag that there's an inner mean girl behind the scenes. 
And when you think about a bully on a playground, at, you know, in a schoolyard acting out, it's women lashing out at other women, women lashing out in general is a sign that something isn't right on the inside. So just like with that bully on the playground that's acting like a jerk and bullying other people, you can bet there's something going on internally for that kid. Absolutely. I believe that, you know, we come from love. I'm sure you believe this too. Yes. So and so somewhere along the line, we get a little confused and we can get misguided and disconnected from our inner wisdom and disconnected from love. But, and so that, that's really what those mean, outer mean girls happen. And, you know, Christine and I are really taking a stand for women to knock this off, to really. I love you know, it. I mean, yeah. I, gosh, I wish you guys had been out even 10 years ago. We desperately need this, especially in our society today, because people are outwardly mean to each other. And yes. I know that on the inside, they're twice or maybe even three times even meaner to themselves because yes. what's leaking out is just a small percentage of the internal dialogue that's probably going on within yes. them. Yes, that's exactly right. That's been my experience time and time and time again. And so if I ever encounter someone, whether it's a woman or a man that is lashing out in that way, that's being mean on the outside, I feel such compassion for them. Because I know there must be something brutal going on on the inside. Exactly. And that doesn't mean having compassion does not mean, and we talk about this in the book, does not mean that then I'm going to be a doormat and just put up with that kind of behavior. No, thank you very much. I'm going to draw my boundaries and not have that person in my life anymore if they're going to be lashing out at me like that. Right. I mean, when you control your own inner mean girl, I'm sure your boundaries get better and you don't tolerate as much of that abuse from other people because you're not doing it to yourself anymore. Exactly. As within, so without, right? So, yes. and, and, and what's lovely is as you are kinder and more loving and compassionate with yourself, you'll attract others that are kind and loving towards you as well. Absolutely. We live in a magnetic universe. It's just the way it works, right? It's true. It's so true. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we're getting ready to head into another break. Um, but before we do, um, I want to let everyone know that when we come back, I want to talk about this this school that you have, this mm. Reform Your Inner Mean Girl School. So we'll just hold that thought for a moment. As we prepare to go into a break, everyone, please stay tuned. This is really wonderful. If you know somebody who's missing this, make sure they check this out on the archives. And we'll be back in just a few moments after the break with Amy Ayler. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. You know what to do, just can't figure out how to fit it all into your busy life? It doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Ellen Baysford from Seamless Life. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Home Times Radio and learn the how of conscious living. Let me and my guests help make your life seamless. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Home Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
welcome back. This is Sylvia Henderson. You're listening to Intuitive Transformations, and I have been talking here with Amy Ehlers, and we have been talking in depth about her soon-to-be-released book, which she co-authored with Christine Arillo, which is called Reform Your Inner Mean Girl, Seven Steps to Stop Bullying Yourself and and Start Loving Yourself. And this book is launching in April, but you can pre-order that if you go to Amazon uh, and go ahead and pre-purchase the book, then you will get all kinds of nice little goodies and gifts. And then also I want to remind everyone, please check out their website with the innermeangirlquiz.com. I think that that's something that we should all um, look into, whether you're a male or a female. I think that men also have an inner bully. Uh, we touched on that light, uh, lightly. And so now as we return, I would love to hear, Amy, more about this school that you and Christine have co-founded and what you're doing. Yes. Well, we created Inner Mean Girl Reform School about five years ago now, and it started with an idea. We were on a hike actually here in the Oakland Hills, which Sylvia, I know that you probably know that I area well. That. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we were, we were here hiking, um, and um, we were talking about our own inner critics and what was going on in our lives at the time, and the words Inner Mean Girl came out. And, um, and then we ended up saying, we should, you know, we just need to send them to reform school. So we decided to run our very first, um, teleclass in Mean Girl Reform School. And, um, it began with this one, I think it was a six or seven week teleclass at the time. And afterwards we were reading through the survey results that we had done after the class, just to kind of hear from women about what was happening. And I remember very vividly sitting on the couch in my office And we both just had tears streaming down our face to read about the changes and the shifts that women were noticing in their lives from doing this work. And from there, it just ended up organically growing and growing and growing and growing until now we've reached over 30,000 women around the world um, with our programs, with Inner Mean Girl Reform School, and also with our Inner Mean Girl 40-Day Cleanse which is a really fun cleanse because you can still eat chocolate if you want to. Oh, I like Um, that. (laughs) Yeah. So we've done all sorts of, you know, we've done free programs. We've done, um, you know, programs that women have invested hundreds of dollars in. And then it really has led up to this moment of finally getting this work into book format so that we can reach even more women, which is really what we're on a mission to do. Because I feel a sense of urgency about this, Sylvia. And I know that you probably too do as well, which is why you have this, this wonderful radio show and are reaching listeners the way that you do. But there, it feels like there's an urgency for people to really connect in with that inner wisdom voice. This is and, so important, yeah, Amy, yeah. because right now we're living in a time that is very uh, precarious and there's so much negativity out mm-hmm. in the media and there's so much negativity in everyone's lives. People are stressed out beyond belief and they don't know what to do with all of this. And a lot of that yeah. stress is coming from this inner mean girl, right? Absolutely. Um, with all the negativity. And uh, yeah, there is a huge need for this right now because people are so hurting and they're afraid to, um, to get help because they think it's just them. Right. Right. That's what I love about this. Yeah, I th- you're exactly right. And it, it feels like, you know, what one of the tricks of the inner mean girl is that what she does is she creates, and I like to call them, and we call them in our books, um, big fat lies, right? So they ha- she has a big fat lie like, um, you know, no one's, you're unlovable. No one will ever love you, mm-hmm. which is one of our other archetypes we haven't mentioned yet, which, which comes from the rejection queen who is all about collecting evidence. And this is what intermean girls do. They have this belief and this belief probably start happened sometime in your childhood where you learned, okay, you're just not lovable. You're just not lovable. And then, and maybe there was, you know, who knows what happened in your life to have that thought, that Mm -hmm. belief get implanted in your sweet little brain. And then what happens is the inner mean girl then starts to collect evidence over time to really reinforce that belief over and over and over again. So before you know it, you're dating people that match up to that belief that you're unlovable, that treat you like crap, that make you feel bad about yourself and that reinforce that belief. This is so true. And I like how it's from the inside out because otherwise what women 
typically do is they try to fix the problem on the outside, which is a little bit like having a spot on your nose looking in the mirror and trying to rub the glass of the mirror to get it off. Right. And and it really is from the inside out. And that's why they're attracting these guys are in our experiences that, like you said, create evidence of this mean girls mantra. Yes, exactly. And so the good news about this, of course, is, you know, we've talked so much on the show today about the inner mean girl, but the good news is, like we've said, there is this other voice inside of you. We call it the inner wisdom. Some people call it your higher self, the divine within, what Holy Spirit, whatever words work for you. This inner wisdom is that voice of truth and is that voice of love inside of you. And so we like the metaphor of, it really is like, there's two different broadcasting stations within your mind. There's the F-E-A-R, the fear radio station, which is where your inner mean girl is broadcasting 24-7. Or there's 108.00, the L-O-V-E inner wisdom station, where your inner wisdom is pouring through you. And you are really at choice as to which radio station you are going to tune into, mm. fear or love, your inner mean girl or your inner wisdom. And so as we start saying, well, wait a minute, what does my inner wisdom have to say to me about my inner mean girl's thought that I'm unlovable? Oh, I am lovable? Okay. Let's start, let's actually start collecting evidence that I am lovable. And all of a sudden you shift that focus. So everyone listening, I encourage you, what is the biggest, fattest lie that your inner mean girl beats you up with? And then ask your inner wisdom to respond and then start collecting evidence that that could also be true. And this can be life-changing. I have seen women change everything about their lives by just doing this with one thought, one of those big fat lies and really transforming it. And it's amazing what can occur. So is this a process that you mentioned before where you're doing this uh, date with your, the daily sacred dates with the inner mean girl? Has that come out of that process? Yes, exactly. Well, the daily sacred dates, so... You know, the first part of the book, as I mentioned, the first three steps are all about getting to know your inner mean girl. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the next two steps are about getting to know your inner wisdom mm -hmm. and really forming that relationship with her and getting to know her. Just like we do that investigative reporting around our inner mean girl, we also want women to do that around their inner wisdom and then start creating these sacred dates with your inner wisdom. And so for some people that looks like, you know, we have this idea that it has to look like sitting on a meditation cushion in silence for 60 minutes. Otherwise it doesn't mean anything. And of course our inner mean girls would lo love to tell us that because then it prevents you from doing anything. Mm -hmm. But the truth is there are so many different ways. And we actually have a whole um, superpower tool shed in the back of the book that includes all sorts of ideas for women of how they can start to have these sacred daily dates it can be as simple as waking up in the morning and the first thing that you ask yourself is, what do I need today? Mm. And just connecting in. Or what does my inner wisdom know for me today? And just asking that one question, or what am I grateful for? Just connecting in. You can even do it while you brush your teeth. If you don't have a habit like this, I'm sure a lot of your listeners do have some sort of daily practice. But it really is about forming that relationship with your inner wisdom and that is where the preventative care comes into play. That is where that support that prevents the sabotage comes into play. I love how you're using the power of inquiry to mm -hmm. activate that inner wisdom because honestly, consciousness is designed to answer any question that you ask. Mm -hmm. It's just that typically mean girls ask the questions that you don't want the answer to, like, why is this happening to me? Why is right. this so hard? But right. asking those empowering questions like, right. you know, what do I need today? That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I love that you said that because our brains are really built that way. You're right. They're built to, uh, you know, okay, you ask it a question, it's going to go and find the answer. So what kind of questions are you asking yourself and how can you shift those into questions that will move you to tune into that 108.00 station, that loving truth station and really operate from there. We want women to lead from their inner wisdom, to have an inner wisdom led life as we call it. And, you know, regardless in your personal life, in your professional life, it's how we run our businesses. It's how, you know, I operate in my marriage the best I can. It's how I operate in my motherhood, you know, really looking at with my daughters, okay, what does my inner wisdom know is best for Annabella? What does my inner wisdom know is best for Evie Rose? How can I really tune into that? 
And when we ask, we, we just forget to ask. We forget to really ask right. our inner wisdoms those questions. And right. that's where the power lies. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're coming up to the end of the show. So, Amy, can you please tell everyone again the things that are out there they can get and where they can get them? You got it. So you can pick up a copy of our book, Reform Your Inner Mean Girl, at innermeangirlbook.com. Dot com. That's innermeangirlbook.com. And um, you'll see we have a, a fun video invitation for you there. And when you buy a copy of the book, we're going to uh, um, gift you with our Jumpstart Workshop and a couple of other gifts there as well. So you can check that out at innermeangirlbook.com. And then, as we've mentioned throughout the show, we have the Inner Mean Girl Quiz, which will help you identify what type of inner critic you have, which of these 13 inner mean girl archetypes are running the show for you. And you can check that out at innermeangirlquiz.com. That's innermeangirlquiz.com. And it's such a fun quiz. I, I mean, who doesn't love a good quiz, right, Sylvia? It's so Especially fun. when it's as revealing as this. I <laughs> yeah, it is. And, then you, and then you get a corresponding, you know, you, you find your ranking for all the different ones, and then you get to find a, um, a little deactivator tool so that you can start um, reforming your inner mean girl. Perfect. Beautiful. Amy, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I've so enjoyed this conversation and I believe my listeners definitely have enjoyed it as well. And you've given us so much food for thought and given us some outstanding tools, some great insight into our inner main girl, which I think we've all kind of known there was someone back there, uh, <laughs> you know, making our lives less, less comfortable and less fun. And you've given us some great tools, great insights. I'm excited about your book. I can't wait to get it. And um, the school too, is there a way to get in touch with the school or how to get on? The yeah, school? you can, you can check that out at inner mean girl reform school.com. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank, Thank you, Sylvia. You're welcome. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope that you have a really fantastic week ahead of you. Enjoy your life because it is a gift every day. Take care, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.